So another day, another couple hours to do some work. Get this level sensor out of the way. And then we'll see if we can get this top hat cut off. I can't remember exactly what's in this cross member back here. I know my brake lines are close by. They go through the frame right there. The electrical, I don't think there's any electrical back there. But I do think, I think the brake line actually goes forward. But I think the airline goes back that way. So we might have to pull that airline out and get it out of the way so we don't melt it. So we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Let me get this sensor out of the way. And then I'm gonna sit here and think about how I wanna remove this. I thought about using the plasma torch. Um, but man, I hate to put a, uh, that much heat in this thing. So I might, I might just try to cut it across here, maybe in the corners down. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I'm definitely gonna take my time and try to preserve as much of this pretty brown paint as possible. All right, give me a few minutes, get that loose, figure that out. All right, so yeah, my brake line does go forward from that point and my airline comes from the back along with the driver's side. So I just decided, I didn't really didn't want to do it, but I decided to just pull the airlines all the way out down the frame to uh, a little access point that I have right there. But I'm kind of glad I did because look at that right there. So I've had this air leak that I've been fighting like ever, ever so slowly. And I'm wondering in that left front, and I'm wondering if that is where it's leaking. Maybe we'll give it a try. I thought maybe it was the airbag. I actually, the suspension work that I did a little while ago, I had me uh, actually swap the the bags from one side to the other, hoping that that was gonna fix it. And the problem didn't move. So that told me it was either, you know, something in the line like that, or maybe a solenoid. But uh, yeah, so hopefully that's it. All right, we got those out of the way. I'll tuck those up so they don't get burned. And then we'll jump, we'll jump back up top side and get a little closer and look at this exhaust yeah it looks like it looks like it got some of the braids there should be all right though they still look around yeah you got some braids on there too so that's what i get for building the exhaust system so low but i like it all right let's go back up top side all right so we're back up top the level sensor is gone I've got my AC hoses tucked up out of the way, my wire and tie wrapped up. I put some aluminum foil on it because uh, I don't know, just just give it a little extra protection. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the cutoff wheel and this will be easy to cut, throwing the sparks down. Oops, sorry, I won't show you anything. This will be easy to cut, throwing the sparks down. I'll cut across this hole, cut across this hole, and then, uh, you know, probably probably come in here and maybe just cut right here to get out of the way and then go back down underneath and cut that back. Um, you know, these were some of the first welds that I ever really did that I was ever, I was like, you know, kind of nervous about, you know? And, uh, you know, the welds aren't that great. Uh, and I'm glad to see that the welds held on the sides there. Now in the back, 
the weld didn't hold, it cracked. So I kind of knew that was a bad weld. I didn't have a lot of bevel in it from what I've learned from there, but still, I'm, I'm pretty darn proud of that going from not having any true welding experience to doing that and wrecking as hard as I did. And it bent everything up before it pretty much cracked a lot of the welds. I mean, yeah. Yeah, all right, let's go get the cutoff wheel. And give this a try. The uh, northern industrial grinder is about to go on me. Switch is going to go bad. It'll be all right. She's, she's had a good life. Not too bad. I kept the heat out of it, so that's good. All right. We'll go in here and cut here. So far so good with the cutoff wheel. Now we'll try the sawzall. Try to go across here pretty low. Maybe right above the top of the weld. I think cutting the weld with the sawzall is not gonna be fun. And then uh, do that to both sides. Now I'm thinking this weld in the back here, hopefully it's so weak and with this leverage of this piece sticking out, I can just hammer this thing up and off. I don't know, we'll, we'll see what happens. Try to drive a chisel in there.
Yeah, I think I'm gonna run out of real estate to get it bent up enough before I hit my AC lines. So, we'll just finish the cut. It won't cut in too bad, so. All right, lots of grinding to go. So we'll get that ground down. We'll go from there. As you can see, I've been having issues with the old Northern Tool uh, angle grinder. And anybody that knows me knows I buy a lot of Harbor Freight stuff. You know, an angle grinder, yeah, I mean, I got a decent one, a Porter cable one. When I'm doing a lot of grinding, I typically go to that one. Otherwise, I've got like five or six that I just keep different, uh, different types of wheels on. So, the one thing I will not buy from Harbor Freight, because uh, I don't know if you've seen the, uh, where is it? It's up here somewhere. The uh, Harbor Freight flow chart right there if you follow the harbor freight flow chart it's not going to let you buy cutoff wheels so one brand that came across my instagram years ago was uh benchmark abrasives and they had a deal where you get a bunch of free discs to try out and stuff like that i did it i love them but it was always always kind of a pain to order through them you know because Get to go to their website and order and everything and you know log in and i can't remember passwords and then the other day i came across them on amazon and next day i got a pack of their flat wheels so they're really a good brand very uh you know i i'd put them up against any any category of uh, or any brand of of uh abrasives out there um the only ones that i felt were better but they're very expensive is all the 3m cubitron stuff but uh yeah for the price and the quickness of getting it to you you can't you can't beat these so we're gonna we're gonna put one on and and get the grinding on all that. Time for a bit of a break. That uh, grinder getting a little hot, but it's getting down. I got the uh, I got the left side done there. Starting to work on the right hand side, and then uh, we'll get to working on the top. But uh, I do want to give a shout out to my buddy Jared. He, uh, Jared's the one that I did the hot rod power tour with this year. He invited me along after I wrecked this truck and couldn't go. He said his passenger seat was open. So, uh, yeah, I flew up to Detroit. He, he drew or, uh, drove over the line and, uh, we rode out from there and did the whole power tour and, uh, you know, kind of everywhere I was going, I was collecting koozies. And he was wondering what the deal with koozies was. So I explained to him down in the, down in these regions where it gets warm out. Today's, today I think it was 96, 97. You gotta have a koozie for your beer. So he got me this, a big old three quarter inch snap on beer koozie. Bottle opener on the, on the bottom. It fits, what I like is it fits these uh, these little Coors Light really well. But uh, yeah, appreciate it, bud. All right, 
I'm gonna sit back and enjoy this, let that grinder cool, and we'll get back to it. Probably not completely flat quite yet, but you know, with this with this weld being cracked and this visually turned up, I'm gonna put a uh, I'm gonna put a clamp in there and see if I can clamp it. See if I can close it up. Maybe get on that backside, remove some of that, and uh, go ahead and go ahead and close this back up. Oh yeah, that's that's closed up pretty good. Alright. I'm gonna go disconnect my battery so I don't fry any electronics. Pull the welding card over. Get a couple tacks in here. Alright, give me a few minutes. Alright, welder's on standby. Got my wire wheel. I'm gonna try to clean up some of this paint back here. All right, I got the Miller-Matic turned up pretty high. What, out of uh, 10 voltage settings, I'm on like an eight and a half. So it's supposed to be good for like 3 16 It's about as hot as I can go. I've got 30 thousandths wire in the welder right now. So I've knocked this down off, off camera, I actually hit this with a hammer too and got it, got it even tighter. So I'm just going to try to place a place a good, healthy tack right there, and then uh, hopefully move this clamp back, and just keep moving back until I get uh, this closed back up and back straight.
All right, got it cleaned up a little bit more. Plant back down. We'll see how far I can run a bead here. I got the welder turned down just a little bit because we did melt through over there. Not bad. We missed a little bit, a little hole, but all right. Definitely find some dirt down in there. Yeah, we found some dirt in there. I think it's gonna be all right. It's a hard angle to get out here. See if we can change our angle a little bit here. Yep, we'll get out a try. Awkward as can be, but yeah, that looks and sounds a lot better. Oh yeah, that's a lot better. Angles matter. All right, so we got about three quarters of an inch more. Yeah, that's it. I don't know how well you could see that, but that last three quarters wasn't good. That right there was really good. There's dirt all in here. And then way over here, if it focuses, yep. All the way back here is, is good. It'll work. I mean, trying to hit that angle, that's the best I can do. All right, new top hat. Might have to do a little work to this one before I tack it in place. But I just want to check my fit up here. And I've got some measurements on where to put this, but right now I'm just placing it about where it was. I just want to see my gaps. I think I got that weld. That weld right there is holding me off a little bit. 
So we'll we'll dress that down. Yeah, it's got me. It's got me. It's got me a gap in the front. So we'll work on that a bit, uh, and then I'm gonna go ahead and uh, sand this stuff, feather it out, so that when we put paint on it, it doesn't look so ridiculous. So I don't think you care to watch me do all that. So yep, I'll pick you back up. Once I get that sanding done and that grinding done, and then then we've got we've got it ground down and sanded down enough. I went ahead and pre-fitted it. I measured the other side, so when you set it on there, I had on that side I had 11.25 degrees. On this side I had like 11.50, so it's it's pretty darn close. Um, I think that's gonna work. Uh, I have checked to see if the frame is bent and the, and the frame is not, uh, it's dented. Can't really see it now, but that's a huge dent. Well, I can show you like this. Yeah, that's, that's a huge dent. So, and then you see that hairline. I've been eyeballing that. So, uh, I'm definitely gonna take a look at that and see if I need to uh, see if that's a weld. That was a weld that I ground down just for looks. But yeah, we're gonna grind it down. Take a look. Other than that, pretty good. I'm happy. But uh, yeah, it didn't crack it. It was just it just flexed the paint and everything underneath enough to uh, crack it. So you can see there's quite a bit of layers on this thing. I did a lot of work to, uh, to get this frame looking good. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll link up a video for you to watch the frame coming together. But uh, yeah, I had skim coated it uh, and then uh, feather fill primer uh, and then I epoxy coated it and then did a little bit I did a couple more coats of feather fill and then uh, went straight to a, a thin coat of epoxy and then paint which is uh, hot rod flats saddle brown fire mist metallic every single word just makes it that much more expensive 